January, it's going to look like December 27th. Oh yeah, it certainly is. It's going to be a, a little bit chilly to say the least on Sunday. Uh, if you're just now joining us, uh, we've already had one front that has moved through that happened last night and into early this morning. Uh, that front current location is already across portions of the Midwest. You can see where the temperatures are dropping in Kansas City. Uh, it's about to move through Dallas, Texas. That was the front that moved through last night. That's of course why we're a lot cooler across the region today. That front really not coming with any precipitation, but the next front sits off towards Wyoming right now. And you can actually see we're in the teens in Great Falls, Montana. So that's a second wave of much colder air that's going to carve across the state Saturday afternoon and through Sunday. So Sunday is going to be pretty cold. Uh, so we're going to kind of take you hour by hour through the forecast. Uh, notice that we don't have a lot of moisture showing up right now. We've got a few snow showers in that uh, band across Montana. What you're not seeing, though, is an increase in mid to upper level moisture coming in from the Pacific, which is actually going to interact with the system uh, by tonight and through the first part of tomorrow. So that's exactly what the forecast model is showing you right now is really about midnight tonight. Some of that Pacific moisture begins to meet up with the colder air across the high country, and we will feel much colder across the high country, and we'll see those uh, snowfall levels start to drop across those higher terrain areas. Now, as we move through Saturday morning, uh, notice that we're starting to get we still have these winds that are mainly out of the south and southeast. That's not overly helpful. We need more of a east northeasterly wind to generate heavy snow around Denver, uh, and we will expect to get that. Notice how it kind of fizzles out. Uh, then we'll start to pick up that north northeasterly wind that is upslope snow for Denver and for the Palmer Divide uh, after about noon. And you can see where that wind starts to kick in, and then the model is picking up on the snow, really starting to materialize as that upslope, you got to have two things. You got to have moisture and you got to have a lifting mechanism. And if you don't have that east of the Rockies, you don't have anything. And so that upslope is that lift that you need. And so as that east northeasterly wind kicks in, snow is going to start to materialize in Denver as early as about one to o'clock in the afternoon. And then that uh, snow starts to spread south. We kind of keep a little bit of that east northeasterly trend through the afternoon and evening. I do think we begin as more of a rain snow mix around Colorado Springs after 4 p.m. And then after six, seven o'clock in the evening, we get a change over to pretty consistent snowfall bands in Black Forest, Woodland Park, and the Palmer Divide. Uh, initially, there might be a little bit of melting, but I do think it starts to stick pretty quickly given the prolonged cold that we're going to have. As we move through Saturday evening, notice how it starts to shut down just a bit. We start to get those northerly winds, uh, which is not overly helpful for snow in Colorado Springs. But then the second component with this system will start to kick in about midnight on Saturday into Sunday. And that is going to be the convective snow component with this system kind of induced from the jet stream. And that's going to help fill in snow across El Paso County and Teller County deep into the overnight hours Saturday into Sunday. So even if you see a little snow in your region and then it lightens up and you think, oh, okay, must be over, must be a bust. Don't let your guard down because we have that second wave that's going to materialize across the region and that is going to be a heavier snow band for us. So I really don't think we start to pick up impacts on our roads until late Saturday night and into early early Sunday morning and then through the day on Sunday as that band starts to spread south. It'll hit Pueblo uh, into the morning time frame on Sunday and it could put down a good quick two to four inches just north and west of Pueblo, uh, maybe downtown Pueblo closer to that one to three inch range. But that snowfall band, this is the band that's going to be fairly erratic and unpredictable and really give way to very wide ranges of snowfall amount. So that's why the forecast is a little bit troublesome right now, but certainty is very high that we're going to see our first measurable snow of the season. Uh, notice here, this is a look at those snowfall estimates, lighter amounts towards the eastern plains, more of a variety around El Paso County. We may even need to up these totals just a bit a little bit later in the newscast. It is going to be so cold on Sunday, 20s and 30s. Wind chill is going to be in the teens and 20s, so it is certainly not going to be a day you want to be out on the roads, if at all possible. We do start to climb out of the deep freeze early next week for Colorado Springs. Halloween looking a little bit warmer, but still below average. We actually don't return to those seasonal high temperatures until late next week. Pueblo in the 30s on Sunday. You really don't see your first snow in Pueblo until late Saturday night, preferably Sunday morning uh, for most of you. Monuments in the 20s on Sunday, overnight lows in the single digits. Uh, so the ground is certainly going to have plenty of time to cool off as we move into this event, and then it just gets even colder on Sunday. So even light snow amounts are going to cause some travel impacts. If you see your region and it only has that one to two inch range in your neighborhood, just know even that coating of snow is going to likely cause some travel impacts. So be careful out on those roads for Sunday. Stay with us. We'll be right back.